Have you ever found yourself face to face with a boss who can't stop bragging, belittling those around him, or maybe a friend or family member who's always seeking the spotlight, showing off non-stop? These attitudes are hallmarks of narcissistic behavior, revealing a deep need for admiration and a concerning lack of empathy. But imagine if there were ways to deal with these behaviors that not only preserved your inner peace, but also subtly challenged these narcissists without you having to stoop to their level. Inspired by the timeless wisdom of Stoicism, in this video we will explore 10 ways to annoy a narcissist, using strategies that not only protect your serenity, but also put into practice Stoic principles of independence and self-sufficiency. If you're looking for ways to protect yourself against narcissistic negativity, or simply wish to better understand these dynamics under the light of Stoicism, you've come to the right place. Join us on this journey of discovery where we'll learn to navigate these turbulent waters with the calm and fortitude that only Stoic philosophy can offer. Number 1. Ignoring their achievements and accomplishments. Have you ever been in front of someone whose existence seems to orbit around the need for recognition and applause? This behavior is typical of individuals with narcissistic tendencies who constantly seek admiration and external validation. However, inspired by ancient Stoic wisdom, we can adopt an effective approach that not only preserves our tranquility, but also subtly challenges this insatiable need for attention. Epictetus, one of the most celebrated Stoic philosophers, teaches us that it's not what happens to you, but how you react to what happens to you that matters. By choosing not to reinforce narcissistic behaviors with the admiration they so desperately seek, we are practicing a form of stoic indifference. This choice is not an act of scorn, but an exercise in self-control and autonomy, reinforcing that our value and self-esteem are independent of others' approval. This stance not only affects the narcissist, prompting them to confront their dependence on external validation, but also teaches us a valuable lesson about the source of true emotional stability. It must come from within. Marcus Aurelius, another great name in Stoicism, reminds us, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Deliberately ignoring a narcissist's achievements and accomplishments not only tests their ability to deal with the absence of adulation, but also empowers us, cultivating an inner strength and peace of mind that are unshakable by external circumstances. By disengaging from the cycle of validation that narcissists seek to perpetuate, we are not only protecting our energy and maintaining focus on our own goals and values, but also practicing a deeply aligned personal freedom with Stoic principles. This life approach allows us to face challenges and complex interpersonal dynamics with serenity, strength, and an emotional independence that transcends the need for external approval. Number 2. Displaying Independence Have you ever wondered why your independence seems to be such a great annoyance to those with narcissistic traits? The answer lies in Stoic wisdom, a philosophy that values self-sufficiency, control over one's reactions, and emotional freedom. Narcissists seek to create a dynamic of dependence, feeding on the validation it brings them. However, by displaying your independence, you are practicing one of the most powerful Stoic lessons, the freedom that comes from mastery over oneself, not over others. Quickly think of a time when you acted independently, choosing your own path without seeking someone else's approval. How did this affect the narcissistic individuals around you? Likely it wasn't well received because it challenged the power structure they wished to maintain. Your independence is the manifestation of your stoic fortitude. It demonstrates that you are not manipulable, that your choices and happiness are not tied to their whims. This not only frustrates their attempts at control, but also forces them to recognize a reality where they are not all-powerful. Marcus Aurelius, one of the most notable Roman emperors and a stoic, said, the happiness of your life depends upon the quality of your thoughts. Cultivating your independence means nurturing thoughts that promote self-confidence and inner peace, creating a life aligned with your deepest values. Exhibiting your independence goes beyond merely annoying narcissists. It is a testament to your commitment to stoic wisdom. You not only establish healthy boundaries but also live a life of integrity and true freedom. This, according to Stoic philosophy, is the pinnacle of personal achievement. 
by living on our own terms guided by an internal moral compass and not by the pursuit of external approval, we embrace the most authentic freedom, the freedom to be who we truly are, unshakable and serene no matter the adversities we face. Number 3. Not reacting to their manipulation games. Narcissists master the art of manipulation, seeking to control others for their own benefit. However, Stoic philosophy offers us a powerful approach to maintain our calm and autonomy, deliberately choosing not to react to these attempts. Imagine someone trying to involve you in a complicated situation. Instead of engaging, you pause, reflect and decide not to fuel the conflict. This exemplifies the practical application of Stoicism. Now think for a moment. When was the last time you found yourself in front of a manipulation game? How did you react? Visualize how it could have been different if instead of reacting impulsively, you had consciously chosen not to give your energy to that situation. This process of reflection is the first step to applying Stoic wisdom in your life. Epictetus teaches us that we have control over our perceptions and reactions, but not over external events or others' actions. By opting not to react to manipulations, we are practicing this lesson, preserving our serenity and strengthening our emotional autonomy. For your next challenge, consider this stoic approach as an exercise in personal empowerment. The next time you face an attempt at manipulation, remember that you have the choice not to participate in the game. See it as an opportunity to reaffirm your commitment to your inner peace and personal freedom. Seneca encourages us to live a life guided by reason, not by the chaotic emotions that others try to impose on us. By refusing to participate in manipulative games, we are walking the path toward a rational and peaceful life, protecting our peace and promoting resilience. How can you apply this stoic approach the next time you encounter an attempt at manipulation? In the next challenging situation, take a conscious pause before responding. Reflect on the best way to apply Stoic philosophy and share your experience. This practice of non-reaction is not just a way to circumvent narcissistic games, but also a path to align more closely with Stoic teachings on freedom and inner serenity. By choosing this approach, we not only avoid the pitfalls of manipulation, but also advance in our personal journey towards true happiness and authenticity. Number 4. Expressing disagreement or constructive criticism. Have you ever found yourself silently disagreeing while someone expressed an opinion you did not agree with, especially if that person had narcissistic traits? Expressing disagreement or offering constructive criticism to someone who thrives on admiration and approval can be delicate territory. Stoic philosophy, however, teaches us that honesty and virtue should prevail over the momentary comfort of superficial agreement. Recall a situation where you chose to remain silent in front of a narcissist to avoid conflict. How did you feel afterward? Now imagine having expressed your true opinion respectfully and constructively. How does that action align with your Stoic principles? The Stoics value the freedom of expression guided by reason and justice. Marcus Aurelius, for example, emphasized the importance of spoken word as an expression of the soul. By choosing to express disagreement or offer feedback constructively, even at the risk of irritating a narcissist, we are practicing stoic courage and integrity. The next time you find yourself in a similar situation, I encourage you to express your opinion in a balanced and reasoned manner. Before speaking, pause to reflect. Are my words true, necessary and kind? This three-step filter can help you maintain integrity without compromising peace. Expressing disagreement or constructive criticism requires courage, especially in front of someone with narcissistic tendencies. However, it is also an opportunity to practice stoic authenticity. By doing so, we not only challenge the narcissist's expectation of unconditional flattery, but also reinforce our commitment to honesty and mutual growth. After adopting this approach, observe how you feel. Was there personal growth? Did the situation improve in some way? Share your experiences and reflections on how the stoic practice of expressing disagreement constructively can enrich our interactions, even in the most challenging circumstances. Adopting stoic honesty not only empowers us, but can also inspire positive changes in others, including those with narcissistic behaviors. By standing with integrity and respect, we cultivate an environment where true expression is valued above mere superficial agreement. Number 5. Challenging their authority. 
Facing someone with narcissistic characteristics, especially when that person holds a position of leadership or authority, presents a unique challenge. Narcissists by nature expect their views and decisions to be accepted without question, feeding their sense of superiority. However, Stoic philosophy offers us a powerful approach to dealing with these situations, encouraging us to maintain our values and to express our opinions respectfully and substantiated. Imagine being in a meeting where the leader, known for his narcissistic inclination, proposes a strategy that you believe to be counterproductive. You find yourself in front of a choice, silently agree, maintaining superficial harmony or express your disagreement based on critical analysis and genuine concern for the common good. Choosing the second option reflects the stoic commitment to authenticity and constructive dialogue. Reflecting on such moments can be enlightening. Stoic philosophy, with figures like Epictetus and Marcus Aurelius, teaches us that true freedom and happiness do not depend on external approval, but on our ability to live according to our principles. Challenging narcissistic authority, therefore, is not just an act of courage, it is an affirmation of our moral and intellectual independence. The next time you face a similar dilemma, consider how stoic wisdom can guide you, questioning and offering alternative perspectives, even when it may be poorly received by a narcissistic leader, is a practice of personal growth and contribution to the collective. This process of reflection and deliberate action strengthens our character and promotes a more open and inclusive environment. By challenging the authority of a narcissist, we adopt a stance of resilience and integrity. This approach not only allows us to remain true to ourselves, but also has the potential to inspire positive changes in those around us. We encourage thus a more honest and respectful dialogue essential for the development of effective and equitable solutions. I invite you to reflect on how you can apply these stoic principles in your life, transforming the challenge of challenging authority into an opportunity to reaffirm your values and promote meaningful dialogue. By doing so, we not only successfully navigate the complexities of power relations, but also contribute to building a more just and understanding community. Number six, not seeking their approval. Have you ever wondered what happens when you stop seeking someone's approval, especially from a person with narcissistic traits? Narcissists feed on the need to be admired and validated by others, but there is incredible power in consciously choosing not to satisfy that need. Imagine for a moment your life without the constant search for external approval. Think about recent decisions you made. Were they influenced by the desire to please someone now visualize what it would be like to act based solely on your own values and judgments. This shift in perspective not only challenges the narcissist who expects to be the center of your world, but also reinforces your autonomy and self-esteem. The Stoics teach us to seek internal approval before external. Seneca, one of the great names in Stoicism, reminds us that we should become our own spectators, evaluating our actions and decisions based on our principles, not on the applause of others. By not seeking a narcissist's approval, we practice this principle, cultivating an independence that is truly liberating. The next time you feel tempted to do something just to receive approval from someone with narcissistic characteristics, take a pause. Question, am I doing this for me or for them? And is this aligned with my values and personal goals? Allowing your answers to guide your actions is a powerful exercise in self-knowledge and assertiveness. This act of not seeking a narcissist's approval may initially seem small, but it has profound implications. It not only disrupts the narcissist's expectation of being constantly validated, but also strengthens your sense of identity and purpose. You begin to live a more authentic life, making decisions based on what is truly important to you. How will this choice impact your relationships and future decisions? Observing the changes that occur when you start living according to your own terms can be surprisingly revealing. By adopting this stoic approach of not seeking narcissists' approval, we not only free ourselves from external expectations, but also encourage deep personal growth. This allows us to follow a more meaningful and satisfying path where our validation comes from within, not from outside. Number 7. Making jokes at their expense. 
Introducing humor into our interactions, especially making light jokes that hurt no one, is a way to ease tensions and create connections. But how do you think a narcissist reacts when humor is directed at them, even if harmlessly, generally not very well? Narcissists have a sense of superiority and a need to be admired that makes any form of mockery, even light and friendly, perceived as a threat. Now think of a moment when you used humor to deal with a difficult or uncomfortable situation. Humor not only changes the energy of the moment, but can also offer a different, perhaps lighter, perspective on the situation. Stoic philosophy encourages us not to take ourselves too seriously and to recognize the impermanence of our experiences. Marcus Aurelius, for example, spoke about the importance of seeing the comic side of life and our own failures. When we apply this to dealing with narcissists, using humor in a subtle and respectful way, we can disarm tension without direct confrontation. Imagine now how you can incorporate a touch of humor the next time you find yourself in a tense situation with someone of narcissistic traits. How can you use humor to soften the situation without crossing the line of respect? This balance can not only ease the moment, but also offer the narcissist an opportunity to see the situation under a new light. The challenge is to find the right way to bring humor into the conversation without being disrespectful. This requires sensitivity and insight, qualities that the Stoics value and cultivate. For example, a self-deprecating joke can show the narcissist that it's possible not to take oneself so seriously while still maintaining dignity. In the end, reflecting on these interactions can reveal much about how humor, wisely used, can be a powerful tool for navigating complex relationships. I invite you to observe how small doses of humor can transform the dynamics around you, especially with those who tend to put themselves on a pedestal. By incorporating humor and lightness, following the example of the Stoics, we not only face the challenge of dealing with narcissists creatively, but also promote a more harmonious and less tense environment. How do you plan to use humor to soften your next interactions? Number eight, outperforming them in tasks or skills. When was the last time you excelled at something in the presence of someone with narcissistic traits? How did that person react to your success? Narcissists often view the success of others as a negative reflection on themselves, due to their constant need to be the center of attention and the best at everything. This scenario raises an interesting question about the nature of competition and recognition. In an ideal world, we celebrate each other's achievements as collective victories, but the dynamics can become complicated when involving a narcissist. Stoic philosophy, however, offers us a refreshing perspective, valuing personal progress and intrinsic merit over external approval or envy. Imagine you've just completed a significant project and your performance not only met, but exceeded expectations. However, instead of receiving support, you're met with coldness or even veiled criticism from a narcissistic colleague. This situation is a test not just for your patience, but also for your ability to maintain stoic composure and humility. The next time you find yourself in this position, try a stoic reflection exercise. Ask yourself, who am I really doing this for? If your motivation is genuinely based on personal values and growth, the narcissist's reaction loses its sting. You might even offer to share your insights and help them with their tasks, turning a potential rivalry into an opportunity for mentorship and collaboration. True excellence, according to the Stoics, comes from within and is measured by our own development, not by defeating others. This principle can be particularly liberating when we find ourselves competing, even if unintentionally, with narcissistic individuals. And if instead of internalizing negativity, you initiated an open conversation about how both can grow and learn from each other, this approach not only challenges the narcissistic narrative of competition, but also reinforces the stoic idea that we are responsible for our own progress and happiness. By outperforming a narcissist in tasks or skills, the way we choose to react and interact can completely transform the dynamic. Instead of feeding rivalry, we can use these moments to practice empathy, mutual support, and collective growth. Staying true to our stoic path of self-development and respect for everyone's journey. Number nine, ignoring them or giving them the silent treatment. Picture the scene. 
you're in a meeting and a colleague with narcissistic tendencies insists on dominating the dialogue, constantly seeking attention for themselves. Instead of confronting or trying to compete for attention, you choose to focus on the essence of the meeting, essentially ignoring the domination attempts. This action, though simple, can be deeply irritating to a narcissist who thrives on external validation. Here, Stoic philosophy provides us with valuable guidance. Epictetus teaches us that we should only concern ourselves with what is within our control. The attitude and behavior of others are outside that realm. By ignoring a narcissist, we practice this fundamental distinction, maintaining our inner peace and focusing on what we can change, our reaction and attention. Suppose that during the meeting, instead of getting irritated or distracted by narcissistic interruptions, you maintain your focus on important agenda items. This choice not only preserves your mental energy, but also serves as a silent reminder that others' behavior should not dictate your peace of mind. This act of detachment and focus, though it may seem small, is a powerful demonstration of stoic practice in action. You are effectively saying, without words, that your well-being does not depend on the power dynamics or the need for others' approval. After the meeting, take a moment to reflect on this experience. How did you feel applying the stoic perspective of focusing on what is within your control? Did you notice any change in your perception or reaction to narcissistic domination attempts? Adopting this stoic approach of ignoring or giving the silent treatment to a narcissist is not a matter of indifference but a conscious choice about where to direct our attention and energy. This practice teaches us to value our autonomy and to seek tranquility regardless of external circumstances. By choosing not to react to narcissistic provocations and maintaining our focus on what truly matters, we reaffirm our commitment to serenity and personal effectiveness, fundamental principles of Stoicism. Number 10. Questioning their intentions. When was the last time you found yourself needing to question someone's intentions, especially when that person has narcissistic traits? Narcissists often project an image of superiority and infallibility, expecting others to accept their words and actions without question. But what if we decided to look closer, questioning those motivations not for confrontation, but for a genuine search for understanding? Imagine a situation where someone with narcissistic traits presents an idea or plan with great confidence. Instead of readily accepting, you ask open questions that explore the foundation of that idea. Or what led you to this conclusion? Or can you tell me more about how this benefits the project slash group are ways of questioning that don't attack but invite reflection? Stoic philosophy encourages us to question the world around us, not with cynicism, but with an open and curious mind. Marcus Aurelius, one of the greatest Stoics, practiced constant questioning of his own decisions and intentions as a means of self-improvement and humility. By applying this stoic practice to questioning a narcissist's intentions, we are not challenging their authority, but exercising our right to understand and seek clarity. The next time you encounter a statement or proposal from someone with narcissistic tendencies, try questioning their intentions respectfully and genuinely. Observe how this changes the dynamics of the conversation. This questioning may lead to greater transparency and perhaps to a deeper mutual understanding. This type of interaction challenges the narcissistic expectation of unquestionable flattery and at the same time reinforces the importance of communication and mutual understanding. By questioning intentions with respect and genuine interest, we promote an environment where open dialogue and honesty prevail over simple ego exaltation. After trying this approach, consider sharing your observations. How was your questioning received? Was there any change in perception or openness from the person you interacted with? Questioning intentions in a stoic manner is not just an exercise in curiosity, it's a practice of living consciously, promoting more authentic and meaningful relationships. As we explore together these strategies for dealing with narcissistic personalities, inspired by Stoic wisdom, we hope you found valuable insights and practices that can enrich your daily interactions. Each step we take towards understanding and applying these principles not only strengthens us individually, but also has the potential to transform the dynamics around us, promoting healthier and more respectful relationships.
If you found value in the reflections and strategies shared, consider subscribing to the channel for access to more content aimed at enlightening and guiding through Stoic teachings and other life philosophies. And of course, if this video resonated with you, leave your like and share with those who might also benefit from these perspectives. We'll continue our journey of exploration and growth, always seeking ways to live with more authenticity, tranquility and purpose. Thank you for joining us thus far.